Hello guys and welcome to another episode of British Drone Ops and today we are back in Wargame Red Dragon and doing another deck build. So today we're going to be doing a British mechanised deck build for all you British fans out there. So let's get into the deck, hit create. So we're going to name this pretty straightforward, we call it British Mechanised. Alright, very simple. Alright, so obviously Blue Far, National, uh, United Kingdom, so we're doing a British deck. Type, Mechanised. As I said before, we're not going to do an era for now, but we're going to keep it just basic. United Kingdom and a mechanized uh, uh, deck. So let's crack on with this and show what my personal picks are for British mechanized deck is. Okay, so the first things we're going to need is the logistic units, such as um, the command vehicles and obviously the supply units to supply our men on the battlefield. So the first thing I'm going to go for is a HQ section. The reason why I pick a HQ section over in the rover and some of these vehicles here is just the fact that you get men in the ground and they're more hard to locate. So I'll probably pick a HQ section with the F4, FV432. The reason why I'm picking one with the, H with the FV432 is because of the fact that it has armor on it. So therefore meaning we have a bit of a bit of armor so we can get around and be less of a target to be destroyed. So we have a bit more sustainability. So And also it's got a GPMG fit on the armored vehicle so it has a bit of a bit more firepower compared to the Pinzega or the Rover. So that's what I go for that. And, and plus it's cheaper as well, which is good. Okay, next thing. We're going to want... And I personally sometimes think we should put in another CV vehicle. So what I personally pick is an FV-511 Warrior. Just for the fact that it's got some good armor. See there, it's got two. So it can sustain a bit. And it's got a good um, gun on top of it, which is the LT-1A1 Raiden. So this vehicle can hold its own. Um, so it's not just a sitting target like the Rover as such or the HQ section Ping Zega. It can engage targets. Especially for the mechanized um, deck. You're going to want a sort of armored vehicle because you're going to be able to get around the battlefield fast. You want to get in there and get in dirty. Really. That's kind of the mechanized role is to get involved. So we have a, an armored vehicle for the CV so we can have a bit of a punch with the command vehicle. So I'm going to have those two for now. Right, the HQ section from the FE432 and, and the Warrior. Next, you're going to want a supply. Okay, these are very important. The good thing about the British, we have obviously you have a Stalwa and a Chinook. I personally pick one Chinook, so we've got seven Chinooks there, as you see, and I'll pick some Stalwa as well. The reason why I pick both is let's say I'm taking a sector and the enemy's got a lot of AA. I'm not going to use a Chinook, so instead I'll get call in the Stalwa to come up the round. So we kind of got capability of both. We've got some air supply and ground supply, so it's good. We've got both areas covered, so we, no matter what, we can supply at the front line. Next thing, got an FOB, which is very important. Make sure you guys get that. If you want, if you, really, so you don't have to. You can kind of just sponge off your teammates. But obviously, the more FOBs you have, the more supply you can have, and the longer your army can sustain itself out in the field. Obviously, Britain, British on an island and stuff like that, kind of very important. And supply is very important in Wargame Red Dragons. So ensure you have one of those. Well, that's my personal opinion. Pick anyway. Okay, next. The next thing we're going to move on to is the infantry, which is basically the most important thing in a mechanized. It's basically the mechanized role is more or less kind of attack more than anything. So attacking um, obviously the British, I'm going to firstly pick off the Fusiliers 90s in the uh, War in Milan. Basically, the war, I'm going to pick one of these just for the fear of fact. Reason being, the Fusiliers are good because it's the only infantry you get in the British for the mechanized units. But we're going to pick only one Milan. We could pick three, but we're only going to go for one because it's quite expensive. So the reason why I'm picking only one of them is because of the fact it's got, um, as you can see, there, a Milan F2 on the right hand side. And obviously it's got the, the gun on top, so the Raiden. So these sort of vehicles can sit in the tree line and can engage, obviously, other tanks and other vehicles. So they're pretty good at um, supporting um, an attack into a town. So they're good for vehicles. So make sure you, if you wanted to pick, it, pick one of those, I'd say. Next thing you're going to want to do is, personally, what I pick, these are my sort of units. I'm going to pick another Fusiliers again, but... Just gonna have the Warrior Knight. So I picked two of those myself. Actually, let's get some veterans. So they're more trained units. If you guys, once you use a unit, when you first buy them, they're only gonna be rookies or trained. Okay, eventually when you use them a lot in combat, they will start getting, start getting availabilities of such as, let me just show you. See here? I now have unlocked Veteran and Harden. What this basically does is obviously gives you more accuracy and faster movement, morale, stuff like that, which is good. So units will basically train up and get more elite, which is what you want. So I'm gonna pick these guys at the highest level I've got at the moment, which is Veteran. So I've got two of those. Next thing I want to do is get some cheap ones now, basically. So now we've got some pretty good, um, the newest usually is 90s, which are good, with the Warrior 90 uh, and the Warrior Milan. Now I want to get some cheap 
fusel is. These are basically my cannon fodder, more or less, going to throw in the front of the battlefield. So I'm probably going to go for the fusiliers of the uh, just just basic fusiliers with uh, obviously equipped with the L1A1 SOR self-loading rifle. Once I got that, I want to go for. Actually, I should explain you why I've got these different types anyway. So basically, on the battlefield now, let's just picture it on the battlefield. We've got towns to take over. I'd have the war in Milan sitting on the tree line, standing by, engaging any um, armored vehicles or anything that's going to move into the towns. So they'll kind of be my like watch. These guys are here with my Overwatch, guarding me. I'll then use the Fusiliers 90s and the Fusiliers to go into the town and take it over, more or less. Backed up by the warrior, okay? So you've got these four units here will be heading in the town to clear it. And this unit here would most likely be standing by in the background watching over, kind of giving, covering fire on a moving. So you kind of got that capability of support. So moving on from there now, we want to get some javelins. Obviously, it's just in case we get contacts from the air. we got some lead javelins there for the British. Um, Milan 2s are good to have as well, so we're going to have them sitting by with the Warren Milan, or we could push them into a town to set up defence positions. So now we've got capabilities of finding off tanks and aerial aircraft. The last thing you might want to get, some of you personally, you could get some more, you could buy one more Fusiliers, or you could buy uh, one more of these each. But what I like to do is to whack in some special forces, fill those last two gaps out of SAS. So now, not only have I got a good defensive force on the ground, I've got some covert operational guys, SAS, they, they are fantastic. Their AT4s and Stingers are great. As you can see, the Stingers uh, actually is 50%. If you want a unit to take out helicopters or aircraft, get a couple of SAS guys in the town and you're going to be laughing because the actually the SAS towards helicopters or aircraft is ridiculous. Probably more accurate than the Lad Javelins as well, which is ridiculous to be fair, but it's good. They're also good at taking over towns and obviously taking around. Their stealth is good, as you can see. Their training is elite, so these guys can pretty much do most roles you want. So you've got your entire team for taking over, and then you've got the SAS guys there to kind of conduct missions that you might want to do around the battlefield. Okay, next thing, support. You're going to need support no matter what in any deck. Without support, it's kind of a little bit more harder to successfully rely on your teamwork, team, teammates more often, but for now, we're going to make ourselves a support de uh, deck. So basically, not support deck, what am I saying? Basically, to fill up the support. So the first thing I say you should get, guys, is... A Challenger Marksman, absolutely fantastic piece of kit that is great against aircraft. As you can see, it's got good long range because airplanes and helicopters are actually good and stabilizes fantastic. So it can engage on the move, so it's a good um, anti aircraft vehicle. So, as you can see, it's radar guided. So, what we're going to want to do is we're going to get another one, not another one the same ones that, but we're going to get another AA unit. But today, we're going to get a tracked rapier just for the fact that if someone does have seed, which is basically what it means is an aircraft, any AA unit has radar guided, it basically can just take it out pretty quick. So we're going to get ourselves a non-radar guided AA system so we can take out that capability as well. So we've got a bit of both there. Next we're going to go for is a Stormer HVM, which as you can see is a fantastic vehicle, right? It's got, it can fire against ground units, helicopters and airplanes. So this is kind of the mighty roll vehicle. No matter what, whatever deck you get, I advise you getting this. It's quite expensive, but it does the job. Obviously, it can ground against, defend against ground units. So it's a good way to kind of put this in the middle of like a challenger marksman and then to work in together. Just in case there's like a tank assault or something like that, at least it can fend itself off until backup arrives. So that's a really good vehicle to have. Okay, next thing. We're going to want some artillery to... RT is very important for, I say, mechanized and obviously infantry units because they can provide great cover and engage like targets. This is the M110A2 RA, which can engage quite a long distance and is very accurate. And obviously, we're going to get two of those. So, basically, what I'd use to this mainly would be popping off smoke and moving my mechanized units into a town while they're undercover, which is great, which is fantastic. So, how I'd do it, like I said there, I'd probably engage the town, fire some mortar shells into it, and then, uh, not more artillery shells, and then provide smoke, and then move the whole unit into it, which is good. Next one we're going to have is M270 MLRs. Get one of those in, was that veteran? Yep. Get one of those veterans. So these are basically slaws. They just fire, as you see there, 12 rounds, uh, artillery rounds, and obviously the rate of fire is pretty good as well, 4 rounds per minute, which is... Absolutely fantastic. So these things are basically fast firing artillery. You can fire from a long distance and over a massive ground as you can see the ground or dispersion so I say is there. So it's quite a big artillery piece. It's very useful. You personally if you might want some more artillery, go ahead and get some more M11A twos 
or you can get a close artillery for mechanized, which is pretty good providing cover. But in my personal opinion, I think I'm going to go for the ML, MLRs. Okay, next we'll go to the tanks. Pretty straightforward here, you guys. What I'm going to do is going to get two Challenger 1s. Basically, that means they're based on my spearhead of attack. Then I'm going to have the expensive Chieftain. Then I'm going to have, oh, I'm going to get one of those. going to get a cheap two, a uh, one cheap Chieftain and a Scorpion. How this works is, from my personal opinion, I use the Scorpions to provide cover. And the challenge is these base two vehicles here. Well, actually, the Scorpion light tank will probably provide cover for infantry, like go in and clear towns with them. Let's say I want to do a tank assault or defend against tanks. I'll have the challenge at the back and the chieftains at the front. So that basically, these are my cheap vehicles. They're basically, like I said before, the cannon fodder. These ones go at the front. They're, just, they're basically targets for anti-tank and tanks. So while they were targeting the crappy cheap chieftains, a challenge of ones are just engaging and popping off targets. So that's kind of that good for mechanized units, which is great. Okay, next, recon. We're going to want to get a ferret, an FV712 ferret. Reason being, its optics are very good and small vehicle in it because you can gauge infantry and it can gauge uh, targets from distance. So if you spot um, a sort of lot CV vehicle or anything like that, you can engage it from quite a far away. Say we went for the scorpion, you have to get up close before you can kill it, or the fox, you have to get close. See, with a ferret, you can be 2,625 meters away and take out a target, which is fantastic. Secondary thing we want is a gazelle. Reason being for that is because of its optics, which is exceptional and it's very small. It is probably going to be a main recon unit you're going to be using to get eyes on the enemy, which is really good. And obviously, it's things you should always start off with have one of these in the air, and you're going to get up close and get some good sights on the enemy, which is basically the win of battle was to have eyes on the enemy, right? Recon is very key, guys. Okay, next thing I'm going to want is a green jacket a recon team. So let's say we want to conduct a covert mission, I can get these guys and the SAS around the rear or set up in different locations in any, behind enemy lines and kind of see what their movements are like and see um, kind of what units they're buying in the air and stuff like that, which is good, which is very, very useful. So obviously you can see the optics are very good, size is very small, they're training shock, so they're pretty good at taking out infantry from surprise, which is good, which is what you want. So a good infantry unit to, good, to use. Alright, next we're going to want a... FV-102 Striker. These are going to be used to protect towns and like, defensive lines, obviously to take out tanks, which is good. 2000 is a very basic vehicle, but it's required. Obviously, it comes quite a few of them, several of them. Next thing you're going to want, this is kind of down to personal opinion, guys. Like, none of this, the rest, well, as long as you've got this here, it doesn't really matter, you can get as much as you want here. Um, but I personally don't get a lot. I just get a Centurion just to back up the infantry in the ground and put a few of these in the town to defend, which is good. Or defend like the positions like the CV vehicles or air units. I'll put them around them just to defend it. I'll do that also with the Scorpions as well. So they're based Scorpions and this Centurion. They're basically used just to defend like vehicles and stuff, so they've got a bit of armor with them. Next thing we want to move on to, guys, is a uh, Lynx Toe. And we're going to get a Lynx AH7 20mm. Get one of these Toes 2s, Lynx A87 Toe 2s, just to engage tanks in the air, which is good, very useful. Then, next secondary thing is the A87 20mm. So, that basically, them, these two working together is good because you can take out tanks, and obviously, this Lynx here, the 20mm one, can take out helicopters and ground units. So, primary infantry, but personally, if you have a few of these, there's 10 of them, if you have quite a lot of them, you can take out a couple of helicopters, which is good, and it's got a bit of cover. These two work well together, so if you're going to buy a Lynx Toe, buy a Lynx 20mm as well, just so you've got that support in the air, because these can get ripped down by uh, enemy gunships. It's not the best, but it, at least you've got a bit of cover in the, in the air. Okay, moving on to the air. First thing I want to do, due to the fact that it's mechanized to be attacking most of the time, I'm going to get some bombers. Right, what we're going to get is, get a moldy roll, should I say. Personally, I would go for a Harrier GR7. As it says here, it's fire and forget, so basically it fires its round and gets out of there, and it has an air effect with high explosive. So basically it takes out personal, as you can see, it says with this weapon fires anti-personal explosive rounds. So basically it's good for clearing out towns and white lot stuff, so it's pretty cool. Next thing I want to get it is a cluster bomb, a tornado GR1, to take out those tank positions. So basically we've kind of got a good sort of unit you know, of just engaging targets and stuff like that. So the next thing we want after that is very important piece of kit is the seed, the Sea Harrier FA2. You guys are most likely to get rookie ones, but I've used this quite a lot. It's very useful, so I'm going to get a veteran one of it. Obviously, like I said, they're on seed, so these basically engage radar-guided um, uh, AA vehicles, so 
basically if there's a, if I was up against a trailing marksman, he'd be able to take it out without having seen it because it's seen. It can the seed basically uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like locates radar and obviously engages it. If it had a, if it had trap rapiers that are not radar guided, they wouldn't be able to engage it. So that's the only problem. But at least you got the capability to take out radar guided air, uh, ground units, which is good. Okay, next we're going to move on to is the last thing we're going to get. Obviously, we got some GR1s and GR7s and the FA2. Now we need to have that support. So when I send out all these out here, what I normally do, I send out the Sea Harrier first to clear out any A. Once I send out, I send out the bombers and the air spirit fighter to guard it. So, see how it goes out, clears the AA, then my bombing strikes go out for my close air support for my men, and accompanied by your fighter typhoon to protect against any fighters that want to take out my planes. So therefore, me and I've got good good air support, and they're going to get to the target. Next thing, finally we move on to the Navy. So, how I have it, I normally have a ship command, Type 21, which is British, a veteran one, so I've only got one of them, but which obviously gives it quite a lot of experience, which is fantastic. Next thing I want is a ship escort to ensure that it's pretty cheap. This one, 125, quite a few of them free as well, and obviously provides some harpoon rounds and stuff like that, so I can protect my Type 21 if need be. Last thing, last uh, ship would be I mainly go for a monitor zipper. What I use these for is Obviously, we're mechanized, and some maps have little creeks and rivers down the middle of the map. I can use this to get down there and support uh, attacks and support units and take out other um, ground units. Because obviously, you can see there, it's pretty good armor to be fair. So, it can do some damage. It's got two cannons it's got an napalm and uh, air of effect rounds, which is great. So, it's a basically a moving tank in the sea, which is great, which we want. Finally, um, obviously, if I'm going to attack positions, I love to use the Royal Marine Commandos. So, I normally get two elite units of these guys, so basically got my Type 2 ones, Poohangs and Monitor, Zippos and the Raw Marines can kind of base off and start its own uh, amphibious assault on uh, a section or, or round back or however I want to do it and basically take over ground from the sea which is great, so I've got the white capability there. So there you go guys, there is my British Army, not British Army, <laughs> flipping heck, flippish, uh, British mechanized deck for Wargamer Red Dragon, guys. I hope that helped, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.